I remember very well the first day okay. I met him and his wife. They're great, but the first day, so he hadn't been able to get out of bed yet. He hadn't stood yet. He hadn't sat in a chair yet. He hadn't done any of those things yet. Um, and I remember we always ask our patients on the first day, like, what are your goals while you're here? And so I asked him, well, what are your goals? And he's like, well, I'd really like to get my drive longer. Talked about his golf game. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's a great big picture goal. Let's start with getting out of bed first. But, you know, he was, was always really positive and looking towards those next steps. And, okay, what can we do next? What can I work on next? Um, so within his first week, we started standing. Um, and then by the end of the second week, we started taking steps. And then by the time he left here, he was walking. I mean, he walked himself out of the hospital from his room upstairs to the front door. He was adamant that he was walking out of here. That was awesome. I mean, they didn't, they didn't know how much function he would get back in his leg. There wasn't really a good way of predicting it um, because he had really severe nerve and vascular injuries to his leg. So to see him progress so far and for a lot of function to come back to his leg was... I don't know, it was really rewarding. I mean, I think as a whole, all of the survivors from the marathon were a really motivated group of people. And a really, you know, they all wanted to work as hard as they could. They all wanted to get back to everything they were doing before. Yeah. And they were really motivated not to let what happened to them stop them from doing that. Yeah. And he's a prime example of that. I had actually made up in my mind that I was not going to run this year. Survivors were with us for a long time. Yeah. And it was pretty soon afterwards. So I think that, you know, you almost heal alongside them. Like, as they're getting better and stronger, you're like, all right, if they can do that, then I can get over, you know, not get over it. That's not a good way of saying it. Yeah. But, you know, it, like, happened to our city. It happened yeah. to, like, I'm a runner. Like, so many of my friends were involved with it. And it was just, it was a lot. It was all-consuming for a very long time. And I think that I just wanted to almost not deal with it this year. And um, then I actually spoke on a panel um, along with John Surgeon, Dr. Kalish. Okay. Um, and met him, and I texted Karen, and I was like, oh, I got to, you know, I finally got to meet John Surgeon. It was so exciting. And I had just run the Philadelphia Marathon, I think, the week before that. Um, and she was like, oh, that's great. I'm glad you met him. And then she asked, like, oh, how was, Phil how was Philly? As in, how was the marathon? And I was like, oh, it was great. You know, I had a PR. It was really great. And then she said, how about Boston? With a question mark. And I kind of just sent her a question mark back. So I, I really didn't know what she was getting at. I probably should have known, but I didn't. And then she asked me if I would run in John's honor. And so immediately my frame of mind switched because I wasn't going to say no to that. <laughs> Training's been a little rough with this winter. Yeah. The weather has certainly been a challenge, yeah. but you just get yourself out there anyway. I think thinking about our patients really does help when you don't want to run the next mile, when you're really sore and you don't want to run at all that day. And then, you know, like you think about John and like, well, those days he had a lot of pain and some people wouldn't have wanted to get out of bed and he's ready to go. You know, if he could do that, I can do this.